Hello everyone, it's Erin Page. I am back again with another Glau story. Go live an amazing life. Today's guest is Marilyn Chapel, and she is exceeding all expectations in the work that she's doing in the community. And she has a very uplifting and inspirational Glau story to share with you. Let's take a listen. Hi Marilyn, how are you this morning? I am awesome. Thank you for inviting me onto your fabulous show. I am so honored. Oh, you are so welcome. I'm so excited to have you. And uh, you are just, um, you're inspiring so many people and changing so many lives out there that it, uh, well, I just, you know what? I'm going to have you share a little bit about yourself and um, share your Glau story, Go Live an Amazing Life, how you're radiating love out there. And uh, I just can't wait to hear it. So I'm going to turn it over to you right now. Okay, thank you. Well, as Erin has stated that, you know, my name is Marilyn Chapel, and I am a mother of three. So I have um, a daughter who is 16, just turned fabulous sweet 16 and then i also have a 19 year old and a 12 year old and so i love being a mother i am a wife love being a wife to my awesome husband of 10 years as well as um, i am a co-owner of a business with my husband it's called chapel electric and then I also have my own nonprofit, which is called Exceeds Expectations Incorporated. And so you're probably wondering, what is Exceeds Expectations Incorporated? And so Exceeds Expectations, it is a um, financial stability program. And so what we do is we inspire, we, we cultivate financial stability and personal growth one step at a time. So we meet people where they are, we help them overcome barriers, struggles, circumstances, and we just remind them that, you know, you're not your circumstance, but you're more than your circumstance. And so we take people through a um, eight week program, financial program, starting with the mind, because it's all about your mind. So your mind is an asset. And so we spend a lot of time on your mind, but then we, you know, start with, um, hands-on, hands-on tools and resources that will help you overcome those financial barriers. And so you're probably also wondering, why did you call it exceeds expectations and probably, you know, not something else with financial, right? Well, it was inspired by Ephesians 3.20, now unto him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think. And so I was so excited when Erin asked me to come on to her fabulous show because I get excited every time I read that scripture, every time I see that scripture, because it just reminds me that whatever idea that I have, whatever big idea that I have, that God has a larger and even bigger plan for me, that my big idea is small to him. And so it encourages me to be able to continue to just push, persevere, continue to create, continue to build community, build relationships, and even plant seeds in our community, right? Plant seeds in our community to where we can build and grow together. And so our tagline that exceeds expectations is, together we can exceed seed expectations, right? And so I just wanted to share with you to my story, what led me to this point? What led me to have the, um, the heart, the passion to be able to teach financial stability? And so I will just share with you, my background is financial literacy or fin fin finances. I worked in a the banking industry for over 13 years, worked my way from a teller up to a vice president of a credit union, and I always saw people come in to the bank or to the credit union, and of course they were um, requesting their needs to be met, and some of those needs were in um, the way of needing a loan, a loan, 
Maybe it was a personal loan. Maybe it was an auto loan. Maybe it was their um, a home, you know, their dream home that they wanted to purchase. Maybe it was the first time, or maybe it was just, you know, the a second time because the first time may not have worked out as great as they thought it was. But to see some of those people leave there with a denial used to crush me. Not just because they left there with the denial, but sometimes I saw where they would leave and not get the education on how to come back with a yes. So at that point, I knew then that, hey, I have to be able to do something greater than what I'm doing right now. Like what I'm doing right now is great, right? At the time, but I was like, man, if I just have more time, more time to be able to touch more people, to educate more people, expand my reach, to be able to just plant hope, to plant hope in them that you can still achieve your dreams. So just because you got a denial doesn't mean that it's over, but look at it as a delay. Take that time to educate yourself, find out the resources out there. And of course, I used to say, allow me to help you with overcoming those, um, those small battles, right? A lot of times we look at um, our battles, our circumstance, and we let it overwhelm us because it looks so great at the moment, right? But it's not. It's not, so just to have that other person just to remind you, hey, it's small, it's not what it looks like, let's tackle this thing together and you can do it. And I'm gonna give you the tools to do it. I'm not gonna do it for you, but I'm gonna give you the tools to do it because you know what, once you overcome, then you can teach your kids and your kids will be able to teach your, their kids. And so we're gonna break some cycles, right? And so I just wanna also tell you that just because people work in a bank, they work in corporate America, whatever it may be. It may, everything might look good on the, the outside, but sometimes those people also go through some struggles. Sometimes they also have barriers. And I'm talking about me. So even though I was in the financial industry and I was teaching and I was helping people, I also was facing some barriers myself. And so early on in the banking um, industry, when I was working, you know, I was single. I was single and I became a single mother. And so during that time, it became tough for me because I began to also face some financial barriers. And so my income at the time was not enough for some of the expenses that I created right and so it was really my perception my perspective on i wasn't making enough money to be able to meet all of my needs right but then i remembered and of course when i say remember it took me some years to be able to remember what i did in the past was not all of the greatest decisions which led me to a the circumstance. So some of the time, sometimes some things can be self-inflicted. And a lot of times that's hard, is a hard pill to swallow. My hard pill to swallow was that I used to gamble. I used to gamble. And sometimes when I would go out, I would drink, you know, so all of that stuff and not saying that's bad for everybody because everybody may not have that problem, right? So it's when you indulge. Is when you indulge, when you indulge, that becomes an addiction. And that's anything that you indulge in become, becomes an addiction. And become and it, it for me, it became great. It was a great addiction that was basically taking a lot of money out of my pocket. So now I was not able to meet my needs. Thank God I was delivered from that. It was one day when, and it was during actually tax time, and I received my income, my um, tax refund. I took that refund and I paid off those payday loans because those pay payday loans was a vicious cycle for me. It was a vicious cycle for me that left me tense every Friday. Well, I wouldn't say every Friday, every other Friday because we got paid every other Friday, but it left me tense every other Friday during payday. The reason for is because I'm at work trying to meet the demands of the customers, right? 
I'm also at work thinking, how am I going to go to this payday loan, get there by six when I get off at 5.30 <laughs> and I had to go pick up my daughter by six. So can you imagine what I was feeling on paydays? It wasn't that I was actually producing to my potential on those days because I was too busy worrying if I was gonna get there on time. And so the point that I'm trying to make is with finances, it can cause stress. It can cause stress to the point that it's hard for you to produce. It can cause stress to the point to where it can have you isolating yourself. It can cause so much stress to where it's hard for you to manage the things that are important around you. And so that is just a piece of my story. That's what I wanna be able to do is reach people where they are. If you're stressed, I wanna, I wanna reach you where you are because you know what? I understand how that feels. I was there, I was there, but it wasn't until I got sick and tired of being sick and tired. It wasn't until I began to pray that if I can just get from under this, if you can just lift me above where, where I'm at right now, because I know my life is greater than where I'm at right now. It wasn't until I began to start journaling, until I began to start journaling and begin to journal my prayers, that I was able to see greater than my circumstance. But not only see, but I also started believing that I was going to be greater than my, my circumstance. And so that's just one journey that I overcame. And I'm just, I'm, I'm excited to be able to share that today. Well, I'm thrilled to have heard your, uh, your story. It is a very uplifting moment in time. And I am I, I'm with you there on the level of stress, the finances. I've had those same moments. So I know exactly what, what that feels like. And I, your statement of I'm planting seeds of hope, that was one of the most profound statements that, uh, that you stated. And it really touched me. And we should all, whatever the talent is, whether it's yes. finances, whether it's you know, whatever, whatever it is, we should be planting seeds of hope. And so that was the biggest takeaway for me today from your story uh, is that you are planting seeds of hope and others should do the exact same thing. And you are a great mentor and a great inspiration for anyone that's listening today, Marilyn. I mean, thank you so much. Me. Bless you. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, you just, um, you, you're just doing wonderful things and you're encouraging others to go live an amazing life. And I just, from the warmth of my heart, I thank you for being here and to anyone that has listened to Marilyn's words and is inspired by them, you know, go out and live an amazing life, go plant seeds of hope, go live the life that you were brought here to live. And however you, um, if you need help, you know, as Marilyn said, she, you know, she's out inspiring and helping others. There are people out there that are ready and willing and able to assist you, to help you achieve those goals that you have for yourself, to live that life that you aspire to live and really essentially the life that you were brought here to live. So with that, thank you, Marilyn, again. I really thank appreciate you. your time today. And everyone, go live an amazing life. Go Glow. And yes. why not? Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>